Before diving into the code, let's talk a little bit about HTTPS in general. So there's no actual protocol that is just HTTPS. HTTPS is just a nickname for the combination between TLS and HTTP. So when we're talking about HTTPS, we're actually talking about first establishing a TLS connection, a secure connection between the client and the server. And then over the TLS connection, we're going to communicate with the HTTP protocol. So I'm going to start by calling the socket function. I'm going to open the man page for socket. And we can see that we have three parameters right over here. I'm going to start with the domain argument here. You can see that we have a couple of options for the domain. I'm just going to use the AFINet option for IPv4. Another important thing is to actually include the socket.h file, as we can see here in the man page. Now we're going to go to the second argument, which is going to be type. So we have a couple of options. I'm just going to use sock stream. That basically means that we're talking about a TCP socket. Finally, protocol can just be zero. That's the last argument. That's just going to leave it as the default protocol. I'm going to save this as a sock FD because as you can see in the return, we can see that on success, the file descriptor for the new socket is returned. I'm going to clarify that on this video, the code is just going to be for fun and learning purposes, and it's not going to be ready for production. I'm going to skip a lot of error checking, and I'm going to just generally assume that everything is going to go in the success flow. After getting the file descriptor of the socket, I'm going to call the connect function. And you can see that the first argument of connect is the file descriptor of the socket. So I'm just going to pass the file descriptor here. After that, we need to pass a structure with address information. So I'm just going to open the man page for sock adder. And I'm going to scroll to the section that talks about sock adder IM. So this is actually what I'm interested in using because this one gets a port and a IPv4 address. First of all, let's include the additional file I need to include as specified right over here. The family I'm going to specify AFINet. That just means that we're talking about an IPv4 address. Afterwards, I need to specify the port. Now, before actually specifying a number, let's talk about host network byte order. So let's open the function h2ns, for example. You can see we actually got to a man page with a family of functions that all help us convert between host and network byte order. In a lot of cases, your host computer and the socket API order bytes in a different way. So if you would represent a port number, let's say, for example, 8070 in hex. So a lot of times, the socket API would actually expect this to be represented as, first of all, 70 and then 80. So because hosts actually order bytes in a different way, and the network always orders in the same, in the same way, we have these utility functions that we can just call, and they'll actually handle the conversion if it's needed. So for the port number, I'm going to use h2ns. S stands for short, and H2N stands for host network. And I'm going to pass the port I want to use. In this case, I'm going to use the actual default port of HTTPS, which is 443. Afterwards, I'm going to use H2NL. And here, I'm going to actually specify the IP address I want to connect to. So here, I'm just going to connect to the Google DNS IP address, which is pretty simple. It's just 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So I'm going to use 08, 08, 08, and 08. That's the IP address. Now I can close this structure. Let's go back to the documentation of connect. Now let's go ahead and pass this structure into the function. Finally, the size of the structure, last argument. OK, now after the connection has been established, let's go ahead and initialize the SSL. So I'm going to start by calling a function called SSL context new. And first of all, you can see that this function comes from SSL.h. So I'm going to add this include file right over here. And I'm going to use the simple version of this function, which is just SSL CTX new. This just gets a single argument.
And you can see that I need to pass in an argument of type SSL method pointer. If we just scroll a little bit down, you can see a bunch of methods that I can just use for this argument. Let's just use the basic TLS method. And I'm going to save this into SSL CTX. Afterwards, I'm going to use a function that is called SSL new. And this will actually create a SSL structure for a connection. This will return SSL pointer. And this will get the context that I initialized before. Afterwards, I can call SSL setfd. And this will basically enable me to associate this SSL structure with some kind of file descriptor. In this case, I'm going to pass in the socket. So first of all, it gets the SSL, and then it gets the file descriptor. I'm going to pass the socket file descriptor. And finally, after that, I can use SSL connect. And this will actually initiate a handshake with the TLS or SSL server. I'm going to pass in the SSL structure. After connecting, I can actually start communicating. And in this case, I'm going to first write a string to the server. So I'm going to use SSL write. But before that, I'm going to actually define the string I want to send. So I'm going to open a new pointer here. Let's send a get request. Now I'm going to go ahead and call SSL write to actually write this on the socket. I'm going to pass the SSL object here, and then I'm going to pass the buffer to write and the number, number of bytes. So for this, I'm going to use strlen on the string. I'm going to add here string.h to get strlen. Afterwards, I'm going to use a new buffer. Let's just make it 1024 bytes, fill it with zeros. I'm going to use another function called SSL read. Let's open the documentation for this one. This actually reads bytes from the TLS connection. So again, it gets the SSL object. It gets a buffer to read the bytes into. And a number. So I'm just going to pass in 1023, just to keep one zero at the end of the buffer. Finally, afterwards, I'm going to print the response. So I'm going to just call printf. I'm going to add another include here for getting printf. Finally, I'm going to close the function here. And that's it for the code. Of course, we can do a couple of cleanups over here, but I'm just going to skip that to make this video short. So I'm just going to save this. Now let's go ahead and run this. So we're going to start by calling GCC and passing in the C file we want to compile. Afterwards, I'm going to specify with the minus L flag, which means I'm specifying another library I want to use. I'm going to use the SSL library. You can see that everything compiles successfully, and I can actually go ahead and run the code. So if I just run a.out, we can see that we got an actual answer from the Google DNS server. So just telling us that the document has moved, and it gives us a new address for dns.google. Subscribe for more programming videos, and thanks for watching.